Well, hello, hello, hello again, class. Hope everyone is doing well. I'll give it a minute for everyone to come in. Believe it or not, still cleaning up in here. Hi, so glad you guys are here. Excuse me, glad you made it or made it back. I never remember to turn off my devices. Okay, you have me all to yourself. Hello, Veggie. Hello, Amethyst. I'm thinking of you tonight, y'all. Mm, 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 mm. So the boys are gone. So I'm going to make three desserts for you. Oh, thank you so much. And we're back. Yes, 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 y'all. I still have some cleaning up to do. <laughs> Maybe we will clean some cast iron, but I just kind of feel like I'm free, right? I'm that kid who's free because my kids are um, gone. But thank you so much, um, Amethyst. I can't remember where this dress is, but Belle, you'd be happy. This is another pocket dress so it comes with a different belt i just put a belt on this one and it's like a maxi um so it goes it's long i don't know if you can see it goes all the way down to my shins and i just have some sandals on but i always want to represent you all well and represent myself well so let's go ahead and introduce, in case we have anybody new here, welcome. Um, and to all of my existing scholars, welcome back. Hi, I'm Maggie. I'm your substitute teacher. Welcome to my struggle cooking class um, here in my kitchen. Um, I have been on a health and wellness journey my whole life. I've struggled with weight. But I finally found something that's working for me, working with a metabolic specialist. I've been tested for food sensitivities. So I basically eat from a list of foods that I can have and a list of foods that I have to avoid. So my uh, food sensitivity test was a cheek swab, some hair samples, and um, pretty much what I eat is lean protein, select fruits and veggies, um, little starch, and as close to no sugar as I can but that does not mean I don't have a sweet tooth. <laughs> I am a boy mom times two for two teenage boys, but they're gone for a couple hours, so freedom. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean that. I meant to say that in my inside voice, but whatever brings you here, you are most welcome. If you love to eat like me, if you want to, if you love to cook like me, or you just want to watch me do it, you are most welcome here. I'm also a proud student of the lead attorney's course. Uh, I'm your teacher, but I'm his student. Um, please check out lead attorney. If you found me uh, through him, welcome. Uh, lead attorney is a now retired uh, family law attorney who put together a YouTube live streaming course because he believes that those of us over 35, I'm 46, have information that people need to know. And so he encouraged us to start a YouTube channel. So here I am cooking for y'all. All right. So we are going to pick up where we left off. I don't know if Lisa is with us, but let me do a quick uh, attendance and we'll see who's present in class right now. We've got Hello Princess. Welcome here. Ah, Belle, you like the pockets? I know. A dress with pockets, right? And I do break out into song from time to time. I don't know. They're always in my head. Um, Aaron, Laura, hello. Welcome, my dear. Um, but yes, whether you want to announce yourself, uh, feel free. I am your teacher. You all are my scholars. The live chat here on YouTube is... Um, what I like to call the study hall. So please pass notes back and forth and ask questions. We'll try to answer them for you um, and see how we can help. I'm just sharing what I know. I am not a chef and I am not a doctor. Hello, God's girl. Thank you so much for being here. All right, you guys. So you know I ran out in a tizzy. So I still have a few things here, but we are going to do three desserts and I'm going to do them in this order. I have a creme brulee that we are going to top. Um, well, I've already topped with sugar. We're going to put that in the broiler and let it, do, let it do its thing. And then we're going to make a brownie brittle. 
love. Amethyst got excited about this, so I'd like to respond to my scholars. Hey, Courtney, welcome back to class. Um, and then hopefully we have time. I'll make another lemon mug cake because I've got some ingredients left over. Now, two out of three of these recipes are gluten-free, sugar-free, and dairy-free. However, comma, this creme brulee is the full flavor. Um, a couple weeks ago, I made the substitute version with coconut cream and sugar substitute. It was good. It was just a little light like it should be. But I was trying to recreate my first creme brulee that I had in Paris years ago, and it was amazing. And I think I've done it. So this one has heavy whipping cream, and I'm usually not cow dairy, and it has actual sugar. So I made four of them, and this is number four. So what I've done is I've topped it with just regular old sugar. Y'all know what sugar is. So usually to get that crackle top, I do have a torch that I've been using. You guys have seen me do that. But some of you all like to cook alongside with me. Some of you all like to cook on the replay. So this recipe, um, I had read that if you don't have a torch, you can achieve the same effect in the broiler. So what we're going to do, the custard was cooked yesterday and it uh, has been in the fridge cooling for a day so that the inside is set. So we're gonna try and get that nice crackle glass brown. So I'm gonna use my air fryer. I'm gonna put this as close as I can to the heat source and I'm gonna turn it on kind of high and let's see what happens. Then we're going to make our um, brownie brittle. All right, let me get my uniform on. do have a Maggie merch store in case anybody's interested. This is the Maggie merch apron. It is on the Zazzle store. All right, so let me clean out my um, air fryer so we can get this sugar nice and crispy. So usually when I'm putting things in the air fryer, I usually line the, tr the drip tray with foil. I'm not going to do that. My air fryer, and I think a link is in the description in my faves, you can see it's the oven style. So it's got these type of trays that can go at different levels. I am just going to take our creme brulee and put it right on the rack. And I'm going to put this in there close to the top. And I don't know, what is broil? Like 400 for five minutes? So we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna let it cool and see if we achieve the same crackle glass from the broiler instead of the torch. So we'll give it a try, fingers crossed. Okay, so I put it on the shelf closest to the top. We'll give it a few minutes and see how it goes. Thank you, Bill. Thank you to all of my moderators, my channel sponsors. Um, I'm just gonna clean off the counter. If you all have a YouTube channel or you all have a business or anything that you want to promote, if your kids are behaving better than mine, Please let us know and we will shout them out. Ooh, Veggie wants to know if I would ever do a charcuterie board. I actually did. I had a spa day with a girlfriend. Maybe you can find it, Veggie. And if you can, let me know. I'll make you uh, a moderator too so you can drop the link. If you look on my video history, you should see a video, an episode that says cheese board or cheese plate. It's probably been a month or so ago now but I did I put fruit I put some goat's cheese I put a, a whole bunch of stuff on there so let me know veggie if you can find it all right just putting this away we don't need this for tonight I'm always cleaning and y'all know I made pasta sauce right before this so we've got a little bit of 
red splatter on the countertops. Love my kitchen, but I can't always see the counters. So I always like to clean before I start and then wash my hands and then my mind is clear. Sounds good? Hey, Mona the moderator, thank you for being here. Yes, so Aaron and Veggie, let me know if you guys can find it or if anybody can find it. It would have been in early May, I think I did. And I don't know if I did a video. It might just be on my Instagram. But take a look and see. I thought I did a cheese plate. But yes, charcuterie board or charcuterie board. Y'all know I don't know. I just make this stuff up. But um, a cheese and fruit plate or tray is great for like a light brunch or, you know, anything that, you know, Mother's Day or anytime you want to, you know, have some nice little finger foods to impress. Washing my hands. So we'll give our creme brulee a couple more minutes. I'm going to show you guys the recipe that I'm doing. Yes, Veggie, thank you. Keep me posted. Okay, so I'm going to pull up another Instagram uh, chef that I follow, Chef Aaron Morley. <gasps> Mona found it. Y'all take a look. And Veggie, look at it and let me know if that's what you were asking for. And if not, let me know what you would like as a day one scholar. I'd be happy to recreate it for you. And to anyone new here, welcome. My channel, Maggie the Substitute Teacher, is only four months old. We have over 1,200 subscribers on YouTube. I call you all my scholars. You named yourself that. Um, I'm not yet monetized. We are on our way. I've checked all of the boxes except for just a few more watch hours. So anybody who's here supporting me, if you make a donation of any amount, it's completely optional, but you're a channel sponsor for life, but you guys are all my day one scholars. So that is what I mean. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to find the video. I follow all of the cooking channels online and so I get inspiration from everywhere and if I can't have a certain ingredient, I'll substitute it out. And we're back. Yes, thank you all for liking the live stream. That is free. Okay. I just sent it to I don't know if y'all can see this, but she doesn't talk through it, but it's, I'll let it play a couple times so you guys can see. Alright, so you see the ingredients there. It's some powdered sweetener. We're going to sift it. Cocoa powder. We're going to sift that. We're going to crack one egg, make a paste, and then spread it really thin on a, looks like parchment paper, and then put some chips on it, bake it, and then when it cools, it should crackle for us. Okay. I think it's lime flavored sparkling water tonight. All right. I'm old, so these shorts, I have to like take a screenshot and do it one step at a time. So if you guys are gonna do this with me, I'll show you what you need. You need cocoa powder. She used Hershey's cocoa powder. It's just four ingredients. So I got this from Walmart. This is the cocoa powder, baking cocoa. So this is unsweetened, okay? So you can get the one in the Hershey's that is the brown rectangle, or you can get the one that's um, Nestle Toll House in the yellow square with the red top. Um, but I'm using just Walmart brand. Walmart brand. Then she used powdered sweetener. If you can have sugar, powdered sugar, I'm going to use my Swerve confectioner. So I'm going to grab that. So 
So this is my powdered sugar substitute. This is Swerve. You all see me use this all the time. The confectioner's one. This is the powdered one that's good for baking. So this is my zero calorie sugar substitute. And for me, it does not have any funny aftertaste. So I'm using Swerve for powdered sugar. Ah, y'all found it. Okay. Um, and veggie, let us know if that's the right one. Okay, then um, two eggs. So I'm using whole eggs. If you're vegan, maybe you can try the just egg. I don't know. And I don't know if this would work with just the egg whites. You probably want some of that structure, but you might be able to use egg substitute. I don't know. I'm using whole eggs. Hello, Diary of Bell Rose. Thank you so much for being here. And then she topped hers with Lily's baking chips. I'm going to find some sugar-free chips and a little flaky sea salt because if any of you all have made the cracker toffee you know a little salt just brings out the sweetness all right hands are dry i'm going to put some lotion on so don't want to be ashy i'm always washing a lot this is my scentsy body cream Yes, that is my secret stash. And so Amethyst, I'm gonna let you choose since you were interested in this. So for the chocolate chips that are gonna go over the top, I have three options. In this recipe, she used the Lily's, I don't know if you can see, I just took a screenshot. She used the Lily's baking chips. So these are the four ingredients. You need cocoa powder, powdered sugar, chocolate chips, and eggs. So what I have, option number one, it's already open, but still good. This is the, probably all the same. I have the Lily's, this is the semi-sweet. So this would be kind of like your, I guess, Nestle Toll House substitute. And you can see no sugar added, but these give you the chocolate chip experience. So we've got those. I have... Lakanto, if you're interested in monk fruit, sugar-free. So monk fruit is that far away fruit that doesn't spark, spike your blood sugar. So I have these. Or I have Chalk Zero. This is milk chocolate baking chips. So we have milk chocolate and we have semi-sweet. So again, in her recipe, Amethyst, she's using the milk chocolate. Hey, almond. So Amethyst, I'll let you choose. While you're choosing, I'm going to have a chocolate bar. Y'all, I know I usually don't get down like this, but I'm going to enjoy it tonight. Mm. Individually wrapped. Mm. Mm. All right. So let's get it started. Get it started in here. Let's get it started. Cause I'm alone and nobody is circling around me to eat all my food before I can. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, sorry. I just burst out in the song. All right, I wanted to grab the instructions. So we need one cup of confectioner's swerve Got that. Let me get my one cup measure. One cup of powdered sweetener. A third of a cup of cocoa powder.
All right, we got our third cup for the cocoa powder. Two eggs. <clears throat> Lily's chips. Amethyst, I didn't, I didn't see anything. I don't know if you have a preference, but I'll just use the lilies that are already open unless you want something else. And then it's going to bake at 350. Oh, <gasps> y'all, our dadgum. I'm already liking the torch better. This is not giving me the burnt crisp. I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna turn it as high as it can go for the last four minutes. Y'all know what a creme brulee is supposed to look like. And if it doesn't work for me, then I'll get the torch out. But I still see sugar crystals. It's like baking, not broiling. I had it at 400 though. For my air fryer, 400 is as high as it goes, so I think I'm going to have to get the torch out. How high does an oven go? When y'all broil, broil, does anybody know the temperature? Mm. Okay, focus, Maggie. I think I'm going to have to bring you guys down for a field trip so you can see. because we've got to do some sifting. Let me get the bowls and then I'll tell you. Hey Moose, 500. I'm home alone and I love it. I need a glass of wine. Focus, Maggie. Chocolate's good. Okay. We got two things going at once. I don't think that's going to cook our creme brulee. So when it beeps, we're going to bring it out and I'm going to torch that sucker. I'm going to take out my frustrations on the sugar on top. So we're going to char that. For this brownie brittle, we need to sift our ingredients. Okay, sorry y'all, it's just me in my kitchen. This is not a proper cooking show and I am not a chef, so I apologize, but welcome to the Struggle Cooking Show. Oh, you like my dancing? I'm having a good old time, y'all. The boys are watching a movie with somebody else. Complaining about their popcorn and snacks and not mine. Oh, yeah. Focus. It's been rough. So I'm using this. What is it? I don't know. But it's a little mesh strainer. <laughs> so when we get our powdered sweetener and our cocoa powder, if you saw in the recipe, we're going to sift it through here into the bowl so that it gets the lumps out so that it mixes really smooth. Hey, Big Bad Bowl, thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh, another channel sponsor. Okay. So yes. We got two minutes left. Let's go ahead and get our measurements up. Then I'm going to bring you guys down for a field trip. Mm -hmm. Vanilla ice cream remix mousse. Mm -mm 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 -mm. One cup powdered sweetener. I just bought a new one. This is great for um, dusting, like we did French toast for mousse blueberry pancakes, anything you want a delicate dusting, 
But in all honesty, when you're making like a frosting or something you want to be smooth, the powdered sweetener or powdered sugar is better. The granular one that we have on the creme brulee is good if you're going to cook it or add heat because it'll melt down. If you're just whipping it up, I would use powdered instead of granular because you don't want those little grains of sand when it's supposed to be smooth, right? You want it smooth. Athens girl is here, but you're having an ADD moment. Is that like um, ADHD? Is that what I'm doing over here? Busting loose because the boys are gone. I got two hours of freedom. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I highly doubt it melted. So I'm gonna bring y'all down. We're just gonna torch that sucker. The boys are gone, so I went to my secret hiding place and I got our torch. <clears throat> All right, so buckle up buttercups. I'm bringing you down to the counter. I'm spending it with you, yes. You know what, Val, you're right, the boys are gone. Y'all, this really is my happy place in the kitchen, but the boys are gone. The church is having a little movie night for them. Hallelujah. So I am free. I could have a glass of wine and just put my feet up. But I'm here cooking for y'all because I love my scholars that much. I know I like the fire. <laughs> Athens girl is multitasking. Feel free, my dear. Okay, buckle up. It's going to get mm, motion sickness. Veggie, veggie. All right. Let me show you guys. Let me move you back. I know y'all like that fire action too. I'm not the only one. So let's go get our um, Okay, so this is what the broiler gave us. Hopefully y'all can see that. So it's let me take this off. So it's kind of cakey and you see it's like sizzling, so it's still very hot. But this is not the proper creme brulee, like smooth, crackly glass. So I'm going to set this down here and we're going to put the torch on it. So I don't know. Let me see if y'all can see. So I don't know if Lisa was able to see. Okay, it is kind of like the top of it when I touch it with my finger. It kind of feels like, um, like a crusty apple pie. Sorry, like a crusty apple pie kind of top here. But we want that smooth glass. Thank you, Big Ben. All right, so make sure y'all can see. I bought this at the Cook's Warehouse. This is like a little mini butane torch. So we're gonna go over top here. So we tried it with the broiler. It's not bad, it's still bubbly, y'all. It's hot as you know what. I don't know if that's good because remember, we want the set custard underneath and just that glass over top. But you see it's still percolating? Can y'all see that? Kind of scary. But we're going to torch it and then set it off to the side. Let's see if it'll come to life. Okay. Hopefully y'all can see. It's kind of starting to smooth and sizzle. I want to see. Okay. I want to get like a nice, smooth, like ice skating rink kind of texture. Woo. So what I got with the broiler was a nice crumble. I think was it mousse that says you have a crumble that you make for your one of your desserts. But for a creme brulee, yeah, it's getting nice and burnt. Okay, so this heat, okay, I'm going to stop because I don't want my smoke alarm to go off. So y'all see it's doing its thing over here. I'm just going to move it over there and let it cool. But once it cools, it should give us that nice, like, smooth. I don't want to say smooth, you know what, but um, the smooth, like, uh, ice skating rink. All right. You know I'm a mom, I'm fin fixing somebody's swim trunks. <sighs> it's a whole thing over here, y'all. Okay, so let's get started on the brownie brittle. So hopefully y'all can see, we're gonna leave that do its thing. It looks delish, okay, wonderful. Okay, so we've got this glass bowl and y'all can see I'm working on my cell phone instructions. One cup of confectioner's swerve. So we've got our one cup measure 
I'm just gonna scoop in here. I know some of it's coming out, but I am gonna sift it. And I'll show you what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna tap. All right, a little bit more, not a whole lot more. I should have gotten a spoon or something. I'm scared the whole thing will like come out, right? Okay. So we got ish about one cup. So what I'm going to do, I've got my little sifter here. Oh, let me keep it so y'all can see. Yeah, I'm more of a cooker than a baker. Because baking, you need to be specific. So I'm just going to empty this one cup of sweetener in here. I don't know if I'm supposed to do the whole thing. Probably not. All of it didn't go, but I'm going to shake it. Is anything coming out? Okay. Yeah. So it's slowly going through the fine mesh grater so we can have really nice, smooth dusting and keep the crumbly bits out. It's not going to be perfect, but this is what she did in the, um, in the video. So this is sweetener. Okay. So it's going down for the most part. All right. So y'all can see here, we've got like the crumbly bits. Am I going to toss them? Absolutely not. I'll save them and put them, I don't know, maybe in like some coffee or tea. I'm not wasting that. We like all shapes and sizes of our sweetener. So I didn't get all of it, so I'm gonna dump the rest. All right, so we got our one cup. And we're just gonna get all of the fine pieces. All right, so we got the crispy bits out. I'm sure there's a proper name for it, I don't know. So you guys can see here, we have a nice mountain of really fine powdered sweetener. If you can have sugar, so one cup of sugar, powdered sweetener, then it says one third cup of the cocoa powder. All right, so this could be your Nestle Toll House, this is my Walmart brand, Baking Cocoa. I ordered it just for this. So again, this is unsweetened. In the winter time, you can also make your own like hot cocoa, warm almond milk, and uh, whatever sweetener, like those crispy bits. And then put a nice scoop of this in there, stir it up or froth it up. You can make hot cocoa. All right, so this calls for one third cup so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a third of the cocoa-ish. <laughs> if it's a little extra chocolatey, oh well. So over the top, oh, over the top of the um, powdered sweetener, I'm gonna get the same sifter and I'm putting the unsweetened cocoa powder on top of the powdered sweetener. So I'm gonna sift. Same thing. I think a proper sifter is like a basin with a long handle. I don't know what this is. I use it to drain tuna fish and whatever else I need to do. But y'all can see I'm getting the nice fine pieces of chocolate dust to come out on top of our powdered sweetener. Aw, thank you, Big Bad Bull. So nice of you to support y'all have been incredibly generous with me just being here makes my day um liking is free subscribing is free um what's it called <laughs> sharing <laughs> what is that thing y'all do y'all know i'm old okay almost done um and watching is free, whether you watch live or whether you watch the replay. 
I'm just glad you're here. <laughs> All right, almost done. Uh-oh, Aaron says, I don't know. What was the question? Don't let the smooth taste fool you. Did I miss it? Y'all know I can't keep up. I'm just so excited. I'm home alone. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the chocolate pretty much went all the way down. Got a few crispy bits. But we got a nice dusting of the cocoa powder on top of the sweetener. Oh, Aaron's like, oh, I don't know what this thing is called. Y'all, I don't know. I just find stuff. Okay, so we're done with our dusting, right? And that just makes it look fancy. You can impress people. So we sifted our sweetener and sifted our cocoa powder. All right, so let me close up because when this stuff explodes, it's an accident. Okay, and then two eggs. I'll keep y'all down here while I'm doing this stuff with my hands. I miss looking at you. I don't know if y'all miss looking at me, but I'm coming. <laughs> just got a little dusting. All right, before we add our eggs, let's go uh, take a look. I'm gonna bring back the creme brulee. See if it's, okay, so the rack is cooled down. So it's not as pretty because, oh, it's still kind of soft. Over here in the corner, it's nice and crackly, but oh, got a little of that pot on my finger. Okay, um, if this were just the torch, I think it would have been smooth by now but we broiled and then torched so it's a lot going on we're gonna let this sit for a minute i think it it heated up the custard which is not what we wanted good evening kb oh kb i, I went back and watched my struggle cooking stream you asked about yesterday's blouse or you complimented it it was one of my old navy uh, puff sleeve y'all know i'm good for the eight dollar old navy dress uh, old navy puff sleeve blouse is what i had on yesterday and you asked about my hair too uh, just a lot of uh, deep condition and i don't put heat on it but thank you thank you thank you okay so we got our sweetener and our cocoa powder last thing down here it calls for two eggs so i'm going to crack two whole eggs So another sugar-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free dessert. All right, let's move this out of the way. So just three ingredients, two eggs, powdered sweetener. If you can have sugar, have sugar. Sugar substitute for me, and cocoa powder. Hey, Amethyst. Okay, I don't know if you had a um, preference, but we're, we're rolling. Okay, so I'm going to mix this up. I'm just gonna use a little spatula so y'all can see down here. I'm all nervous about my Maggie apron, but we're just gonna mix this three ingredient brownie brittle batter. There we go. I was waiting for one egg to crack. So we're going with the powder. We got our egg in there. I love our study hall. All right. Just want to get this nice and incorporated. I still see like some dry bits towards the side and the back. So I really am just trying to mix everything, get that nice like pudding consistency so we don't have any ashy spots. No powder left behind. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Focus, Maggie. All right. So you can see what we have. Oh, hopefully y'all can see what we have here. So this is our batter. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and do everything here and then wash my hands. I'm going to get our air fryer tray and some parchment paper. So it's just three ingredients, but the thing, the key is to spread it out as thin as possible. So let me make sure y'all can see. Oh, washing my hands. I don't want to mess up my apron. All right. So I have my janky air fryer thing, whatever it's called, drip tray.
and uh, just parchment paper from the Dollar Tree. All right, so this is big enough for a baking pan, but I'm just gonna kinda tuck in the sides. Parchment paper has been treated with silicone, so that's why it doesn't stick. Okay, so now for our brownie brittle, what I'm gonna do, if you guys saw the video, she scooped everything out. I am really worried about my apron, y'all. Oh, I don't wanna get chocolate on it. Okay, so we're just going to dump it all out. I'm using a little spatula. I'm just going directly on the parchment paper. And then the key for the brownie brittle is to smooth it out as thin as possible. That's what's going to make it snap and crackle. Let me make sure I get all of it out because I'm greedy. Again, this is three ingredients, egg, unsweetened cocoa powder, and powder sweetener. Sugar, if you can have it, sugar substitute for me. Okay. So, dairy-free and all that, sugar-free and no gluten. So if this were a big like baking tray, you could get it super thin, but I'm just going to use the spatula and go all the way to the sides of my tray. Just using the spatula, doesn't have to be perfect. Just wanna get it as thin as possible y'all can see now of course if you were doing like proper brownies you know you would put them in like a deeper dish that had the sides so you could get the crunchy corners but for the brownie brittle you want to just spread it out because you all know this is supposed to snap into those jagged pieces so y'all can see what we have here okay so I think that's good enough let me rinse this off and then I'm just gonna check before I bake it if she put the chocolate chips on now, and the salt now, or after. All right. It's gonna go in the air fryer. Let's see what this says. Lily's chips, I guess we'll do, I'm just wondering, do I do the chips? Hold on, let's watch this video one more time, y'all. All right, so she sifted her powder, sifted her cocoa powder, then the eggs, and then the batter, and then she poured it. But see, I don't know. What do y'all think? Did she put the, um, that's why these shorts, ugh, they frustrate me. All right. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit. And Amethyst, I don't know if you have a preference, but I'm gonna use these Lily's Semi-Sweet, unless you want milk chocolate or something else. I don't know, what do y'all think? I'm just gonna pour some in my hand and just sprinkle. It's hard to tell, you see what I mean, Erin? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, y'all, it's so, okay, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some chips on here. What I want to have happen, if you remember her final picture, you have the brownie brittle and then you have the chips and it's two different like textures. What I don't want is that the chips like melt in there and it's like hard to tell. So we went ahead and put some chips on here and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of flaky sea salt. Again, I don't know if she did this before and after, they don't say but I'm using my Hawaiian uh, sea salt. This is the flaky one. Um, a little bit of salt just makes sweet taste, you know, really good. You don't need a whole lot, but the flake is nice because it's flaky and it stands up on this kind of stuff instead of like if I just uh, sprinkled salt, it would melt all in there. So I'm literally... So when you um, bite into it, you will get hopefully the brownie brittle, some melted chocolate chip, and a little bit of uh, flaky sea salt. Okay, 
All right, class, field trip, you're coming back up. Let's check our creme brulee one last time. Because I'm going to eat this, and then we're going to make the mug cake. It's still warm. It's a little soft in the middle, but it is. All right, here we come. All right, close your eyes, motion sickness. All right, class. Sorry, it's just me and my iPad. So I got to move y'all around the kitchen with me. Okay, so for this brownie brittle, it says, I'm so excited. I took a screenshot because she was moving fast. I love watching social media recipes and then trying to recreate them. Um, and I have made this before. So 350 for 10 minutes, up to 18 minutes, depending on how thin you make it. So if you are able to spread your batter out really, really thin, you could bake it in 10 minutes. But if it's thicker, it says up to 18. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this in at 350 and see what it does. I don't know, what do y'all think? Is that thin or thick? What does it look like to you or medium? I struggle sometimes making it level. All right, let me wash my hands. And rinse this off. All right, it's up to you all. I was also going to do the lemon mug cake. I haven't seen any of our bots tonight. Um, but I have some ingredients left over. I'll taste this creme brulee, but would you all like the lemon mug cake, the one minute microwave cake? Or we could do some cleaning stuff. My dishwasher is going and I got a couple cast iron that I need to clean out. <sighs> This is my happy place. Oh, so happy. Got dessert. Okay, Miss Gold Girl says yes, please. Yes to the lemon cake. Is that what you're asking for, my dear? All right, y'all. It looks kind of janky, but I'm going to do a texture test. Okay, you want to make it with me, Mona? Let me take my goat's cheese out. Y'all would think I'd have this stuff at my fingertips. I have one open, so I hate to open another one. to give you guys some options yes lemon cake it is lemon cake lemon cake lemon cake okay I'm not gonna try the creme brulee because I'm thinking about my photo op I want to dig into this thing so bad but I want to have my lemon cake my creme brulee and my brownie brittle all in one picture all right 
So let me print out the recipe. We'll just let that cool. Let me print out the recipe again. If any, yes, we're making lemon cake. So this is really easy. This is the leftover creme brulee that it does not have the glaze on it. Okay, so this is a low carb love recipe. Let me pull it up and print it again. This takes a minute and a half in the microwave. So it's, and it's a portion for one. So this is our lemon mug cake. Go ahead and get a coffee mug of your choice. Try to get one kind of uniform. This would have been a great one, but sorry. Oh. Didn't Ava say we could do this in a man? I was going to say a mannequin. What is it called? Ramekin. in the dishwasher. I'm gonna use my little Pamper Chef measuring cup. So we're gonna make this cake in the microwave and then you turn it upside down on a plate. So it'll kind of look like a dome when I'm done, but that's what I got. The mugs that I have, okay, so this is what we're going for. Oh, it's hard to see. Let me print it out. Dishwasher just finished. Hold up. I can't see. It's going to fog me. <laughs> I'm going to be blind. Glasses in the kitchen. Ramekin. You guys can choose measuring cup or ramekin. Focus, Maggie. Okay. I was like, what is cooking? Brownie brittle. I'm just going to print this on paper, y'all. I'm old, so I'm printing this to the printer. So I'll tell you the ingredients. Exactly. I don't have a sauna. I'm not lead attorney, but I can put, I can get a facial in the dishwasher. All right. So your ingredients, you need butter. If you want to cook with me, we're going to get our ingredients one by one. If you can have regular butter, have some for me. I'm sensitive to cow dairy, so my substitution is goat's butter. It is butter made from goat's milk. I love it. Got it from Whole Foods. Cooks like, looks like, tastes like butter, but no cow dairy. You need almond flour. If you're moving towards gluten-free baking or trying to avoid grains and carbs, this may be a pantry staple for you, but this is just Walmart almond flour. It's almonds crushed down into a fine powder. You need baking powder. This should be a kitchen staple. So it's just regular old baking powder. It does something, I don't know. Y'all know. And y'all have told me before, I don't remember. Tablespoon sweetener. She uses the granular monk fruit. I'm gonna try swerve this time. Cause I like it sweet. So if you guys noticed for the for our brownie brittle, I use this swerve. The confectioner's is the powder one by Lisa. 
um, granular. I don't know, Lisa, if you saw your um, creme brulee under the broiler, eh, I would get a torch. Granular, that's the one that's like the crystals. So you need sugar or your sweetener, three tablespoons of egg whites, So I keep these in the fridge. You can get any store brand, the liquid egg whites in the carton, um, or you could separate them by hand if you have to. One teaspoon of lemon juice. I have some left over from my accident last time. I thought I had some. Guess I'll be making some lemon juice. I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use the artificial one today and see how that comes out why did I think that would keep hey Jasmine welcome to class thank you for being here So I do have fresh lemons, but since this is the second time making this, I like to see what ingredients, uh, how it tastes with different ingredients. So this is lemon juice from Concentrate. So I'm gonna use the squeeze bottle tonight. And then it says some lemon zest. I'll still zest a lemon anyway. Um, all right, let me get my printout. All right, so this is what we're going for. This is the one portion keto lemon mug cake. Cake. I am not keto. Keto allows you to have cow dairy and I'm dairy free, but I love using inspiration from some of their recipes. So this is what we're going for. We're gonna make the cake and we're gonna make the glaze. Okay, so we'll try in the ramekin. So the instructions say, melt one tablespoon of butter. So I'm gonna use my goat's butter. If you have regular butter, go ahead and melt down one tablespoon. So I'm gonna cut a pat here and then just melt it in the microwave. I'm wondering about our brownie brittle. So I've got I don't know, about a pat, two of them, so I'm gonna cut that in half. So I'm putting one pat of butter in the ramekin. We're gonna do it in the ramekin and I'm going to um, microwave it. Oh, Athens girl, come on over, sweetheart. You're having chocolate almond milk. do everything while the boys aren't here. Y'all know I wouldn't be able to taste any of this stuff. I'm smelling my cocoa powder. Mom taught me to cook with all of my senses and I just want to check on our brownie brittle. So y'all can see how it's kind of dry and dusty, how it's puffed up, but We did still get our chocolate chips on there. I think I'll give it one more minute and then it says to let it cool completely. So we'll see how much we can get it to cool.
All right, so we have our butter melted, just like if we were gonna dip crab or something in there. Wouldn't that be yummy? Okay, so basically we just put everything in here and stir it up. You didn't ask for that. Okay, three tablespoons of almond flour. So we got our tablespoon measure, almond flour. So just scoop it in there, shake off the excess. One, two, and three. So we got our almond flour in there with the butter. KB, I know you like it. Y'all keep coming back. You know what to expect here, scholars. Um, half teaspoon baking powder. We got our half teaspoon. Going into the baking powder, use a straight edge to scrape the excess. Add that in there. All right. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take our brownie brittle out. And to get it to cool fast, I'm gonna take it off the parchment paper and put the parchment paper directly on the granite. Let's see if we can get it to snap crackle but at least it's off the hot pan. All right, so we got our brownie brittle. I'll put our creme brulee next to it. Our struggle creme brulee, I think it finally solidified. So we got a nice crackle glass, not as smooth as I would like. I would not recommend the broiler, but we got it burnt. So we're gonna put this next to our brownie brittle. All right, see if we can get this mug cake. I'm so excited. Three desserts, I'm like, which one, which one? I want them all. Focus, Maggie. Okay, one tablespoon, hey, titanium, welcome to class. One tablespoon of sweetener. So I'm going to use the Swerve granular. Remember for the brownie bit brittle, we use the confectioners, which is the powder. Okay, that's how you got that nice smoothness. Smooth. I don't know. It just came out that way. All right. So let me get the almond dust off of here. I'm moving fast because the boys are in movie night from 6.30 to 8.30. I'm like, ah, I gotta go get them. But nobody's here. That's why we're doing three desserts. Okay. One tablespoon of sweetener. A little dusty, but we've got our almond flour, baking powder, butter, and sweetener. I'm running out of room, y'all. Okay, three tablespoons of egg whites. I'm using the carton egg whites. Sorry, y'all. I'm getting texts from the boys. They're virtually fighting. Never ends. All right. One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. Three tablespoons of egg white. Now it says a teaspoon of lemon juice. That's a half teaspoon. And I'm going to try the um, squeeze one tonight. Um, last time we did it, I did the um, actual lemon juice, but I wanna see how the flavor is. Oh.
Oh, do you have to, you got to poke it. I don't know if I have something small and sharp, like a pin or something. What do you get in there with? Y'all know what I'm talking about. That thing. Okay. Little knife. Let's see if... All right. It's not perfect, but... Half... Yeah. All right. And then it says an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of lemon zest. I'm just going to get one of my lemons here and just zest right over it. Zest is just a fine grate of the peel. So I'm going to grab a lemon, wash it. zest a little bit. Hi all about Mika. Thank you for being here. So with zesting I just go a little bit and then stop when I see the white part and an eighth of a teaspoon is really just um, like a pinch. So I'm doing this over the ramekin. Is it coming out? So I just do a little bit turn, a little bit turn. For me, it kind of collects on the back side, so I'm just going to scrape it off. This just gives you that bright extra lemony flavor if you like a lemon cake. All right, so not sure if y'all can see, I got the little lemon peel. I'm going to stir it up. I'm using the ramekin. This recipe is called a mug cake because you make it in a coffee mug. So you can see what I have here. I'm just stirring up my cake batter. I hope it doesn't overflow in the microwave. So the, it's just two steps. Add ingredients into a mug, mix thoroughly, and microwave for one minute and 20 seconds. So you guys can see what we have here for our cake batter. Butter, sweetener, almond flour, baking powder, lemon juice, and lemon zest. One minute and 20 seconds. Looks kind of like a little porridge. All right, so now we're gonna make the glaze, which is the frosting, and we're done. For the glaze, it's one tablespoon of cream cheese. So if you can have cow dairy, you could use Philadelphia or Walmart brand, that's fine. I found something at Whole Foods that's another option you guys can use as a substitute. This right here is snow frisk. If you like a creamy cream cheese, but you're trying to move away from cow dairy, if you see at the bottom here, this is 20% cow and 80% goat's milk. So this one is a really nice spreadable cream cheese substitute that I've used in the past. I'm really trying to avoid all cow dairy. So I'm using this right here, Chavri. This one is 100% goat's milk. I love it as a cream cheese substitute, but goat's cheese does have a little bit of an acquired taste. So, so one tablespoon of cream cheese softened. I think I'm gonna use everything that's left in here. Hey, Leanne. Y'all, our brownies looking kind of nice. All right, so I'm just going to scoop up what's in here. When I made this last time, I had a lot of glaze kind of on the side of the cake, um, which was nice to sop it up. So it's a little overflowing, but it's not all the way full, whatever. So the reason why it says a tablespoon of cream cheese softened you're gonna stir this glaze up. So if you're gonna make this, just take it out of the fridge so it can get you know, a little bit closer to room temperature. If it's like 
you know, a brick, it's going to be hard to mix. All right, so we've got our cream cheese, could be goat's cheese. Ooh, our almond cake is done. <gasps> I would not recommend the ramekin. Use a mug. It needs room to rise. I tried the ramekin. I'm still going to use it, though. We'll just set it out. <sighs> Feeling greedy. I want it all in my cake. I'm still going to um, put it over the plate. Struggle Lemon Cake wins again. I know Ada was like, try it in a ramekin because when I did it before, I used a mug that was kind of like that shape. So when I turned it over, it was a little bit like um, not uniform. And so, hey, that's what we do here. Let me see what happens if I can. Still gonna eat it. Still have that like cake. Mmm, it's good. Let me see if I can get it off of the ramekin. So we're gonna let our cake cool. Doesn't hurt anyone. You're right. So we're gonna let our cake cool and make this glaze. One tablespoon cream cheese, could be goat's cheese. One tablespoon powdered sweetener. So back to the powdered sweetener. I'm just gonna use a kitchen spoon. For the frosting, you want to use a powdered sweetener. For the actual cake, granular is fine. One tablespoon of heavy cream. Oh, cook too long? Okay. Yeah, one minute and 20 seconds. Yeah. If you can have cow dairy, have some for me. I'm using the Silk Dairy Free Heavy Whipping Cream. This substitute is made from coconut cream. Thank you, Mona. So another tablespoon, I'm just gonna use this one from the cream cheese. This is for the glaze. Oh crap, got a little clumpy, but. <sighs> one teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm going to use the squeeze one again. It's not really coming out the way that I want it to, but half a teaspoon. Let's see if I can get a half more. I didn't puncture it well. Watch it just explode all over me. Wouldn't that be? All right, and then the same thing for the glaze, an eighth of lemon zest. I got some cream on it. So I'm gonna zest this in the glaze. All you need is a fine grater. I don't have a fancy microplane. I'm just zesting this over the frosting that we're making and an eighth is again, just a pinch, scraping it off the back because I'm greedy. All right, so for our glaze, you can see. All right, so we're just going to mix this up and then pour it all over our mug cake and um, if your ingredients were room temperature and powdered 
then it'll be pretty smooth. If it's a little lumpy, then you can whisk it. Not bad. Ooh. So our mug cake, <gasps> y'all. <sighs> Professor Lead is here. He could tell I'm a little despondent. Um, the boys are away and virtually fighting each other over text and I need to turn off my notifications, but it's fine. So we've got three desserts tonight. We've got our almond mug cake. Yeah, I'm so sorry, y'all. I do not mask well. It's just like they were supposed to be at a movie night. I just wanted two hours of peace and yeah. Okay, so we've got our lemon cake, microwave mug cake, and our glaze going on top. It could be a little smoother. I am going to spread it over. And I'm going to just for a fact, do you see how it's still a little bit lumpy? Honestly, I should have whisked it better, but not bad, right? Mug cake looks good. TLA's in the house for the brownie brittle. Okay. So let me give you a little presentation. I'm just going to zest a little bit on top of our mug cake. This is just a lemon and a fine grater. Just getting a little bit of lemon shavings on the cake because I want to have all three desserts ready. We'll let lead attorney pick. Looks good. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of lemon slice just for garnish. I thought I had some, but I'll just cut this fresh one that I've been um, zesting. So I just cut off half the lemon. I'm going to cut a very thin slice, show you guys a little presentation. <laughs> You're going to get out of bed to make this cake, <laughs> Mona. All right, so for a little garnish, just like the picture, this is what we're going for. This is the low carb love lemon mug cake. Hers is a little lumpy too. That's fine. I'm going to show y'all how to make that little lemon on the top. So I'm cutting a very thin slice like this thin. If you need a guard, you can use a guard or if you have pretty steady hands, you can get it. So you have your little lemon like this, then you're going to cut a slit. I had a little hole come through mine, which is fine. There was a seed there. So then when you get the slit, all you have to do is just kind of turn it and place it on your cake. So we have, hopefully y'all can see the lemon zest. Oh, see our cake is still warm. <laughs> so our cake is still warm from the microwave. So it's melting the, um, the glaze. All right. Lead attorney, I want you to choose. You got three options tonight. You have a lemon cake. <laughs> you want lemon cake now? Okay. Or the creme brulee, the struggle creme brulee. Got a nice glaze. We tried it in the broiler. I'm going to taste all of them, y'all. After th this, we're tasting all of them. But I'm going to put all three of them together and then y'all the brownie brittle. <laughs> But everybody says yummy? Okay. So remember we made the brownie brittle on parchment paper and I took it out of the tray so that it could cool on the counter. Do y'all see how making it really thin has got it like almost dusty? Let me move my lemon cake so I don't get any chocolate on this. And my creme brulee. I'm going to get a white plate and try to break our brownie brittle. You can see it's like one big sheet. It's still a little bit warm at the bottom, but I'm going to break this into pieces. Oh, 
Lena Turney, our professor, is here. <laughs> okay. So this is the brownie brittle with chocolate chips that's got a little flaky sea salt. A dessert charcuterie board, you're right. Okay. Now, if it were cooled all the way, literally it would just kind of snap, but y'all see what's happening here? It's still a little bit chewy, but I'm just gonna break it in big chunks. Gonna peel the parchment paper away. See how it's just kind of coming apart? So, I don't know if y'all like big pieces. Oh yeah, lead attorney, you know we're all bulldogs. Susan and I went to high school together. And so, yes, we are proud uh, bulldogs. Okay, y'all, so what I'm doing is I'm taking it off the parchment paper. Now, if I had let it cool completely, it would come off clean. It's still a little cakey on the bottom, but it's okay. I got something for you. <laughs> y'all are making my day and I needed it tonight. I'm just peeling it off the parchment paper. It's still a little bit warm, but we're gonna make it work. Y'all, anybody craving a whoopee, what is it, a whoopee pie? I'm just trying to take this off and put it on a plate. If you had let it cool completely, it would just snap away. So just know that I'm moving a little fast because I gotta pick up the tyrants. But if you have your whipped cream, coconut whipped cream, all right, y'all see what's happening here. I'll do the rest of it later. Let me get a small plate. Ooh. Did someone say charcuterie board? So you have lemon cake or your choice of a creme brulee or brownie brittle. <gasps> yes, go dogs. Okay, y'all, I needed this tonight. I'm gonna take a picture of the tray and lead attorney, I wanna know what's your favorite. You've got lemon cake, brownie brittle, or creme brulee. Let me show you guys a, um, a quick little treat. Get a couple pieces of brownie brittle, whipped cream, for me coconut, anybody like a whoopie pie? Mm, now, oh my God, picture Maggie, picture. Y'all, it is so good. Oh my God, the flaky sea salt, oh my God. Double dog, <laughs> A whoopie pie is chocolate cake, I think whipped cream or some frosting and then more chocolate, yeah. That's my whoopie pie. All right, y'all, I'm taking a picture. It's going so fast. The brownie brittle looks awesome. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm just taking pictures from multiple angles and I'll do a taste test for everybody. Oh yeah, double dog. That's what happens when you get two. I still claim the Bulldogs lead. I don't know if you know this. My mom graduated from Georgia. My dad graduated from Georgia. My brother graduated from Georgia. I was accepted to Georgia, but who remembers where Maggie went to school? Do any of my scholars, you get happy mail if you know where I graduated from college. I love sending happy mail, whoever has it first. I'm just taking pictures, get up close to your food. I 
All right. There you go. Ava got it. <laughs> okay. So y'all, our brownie brittle is excellent. It's nice and crispy on the top. The chocolate chips held form, but y'all can see on the bottom, it's still a little bit cakey. So the key to get it to be really like snap crispy, it's pretty snappy. Make it as thin as you can. Oh, Suzette, whoever Suzette is, thank you. Oh, Suzette, Speaks is here. And we didn't have a football team, so I'm still a bulldog. Grew up in Athens from elementary to high school. Okay, thank you, Suzette. So you all can see our brownie brittle, brownie brittle is nice and snappy on top. Still a little cakey on the bottom. Just let it cool completely and you'll get your crumble. If you want your chocolate fix, sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. Now, who's ready for some team replay? Who's ready for some lemon cake? This cake was made in the microwave in one minute and 20 seconds. Okay? In a mug, well, in a ramekin. So we're gonna cut into this. This is almond flour. Y'all can see it gives you the cake experience and we made our own glaze and everything. How do I follow up that chocolate with this cake? I will try. If you want a little cake for one, Sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And Erin, inbox me that you won so I remember. Y'all, this is excellent. It's um, nice and bright. And this is using the, um, the lemon juice. Of course, I had a whole lemon. I could have squeezed this juice, but I wanted to see, because sometimes you don't always have lemons on hand. If you want a little treat for one quickly, excellent. Oh, thank you, Erin. But since lead attorney is here, and he said, and I quote, if I made a dessert for him, he doesn't want sugar-free. He doesn't want gluten-free. He doesn't want dairy-free. Lead attorney wants the full flavor. Well, lead attorney, this is your day. I had creme brulee for the first time in Paris years ago, and I've been trying to recreate it. This is full dairy whipping cream, real Dixie crystal sugar with a glaze on top that we just torched. So let's crack in here. Hopefully y'all can see, oh my God. We got a nice custard in there. You see that nice sheet of glass? Oh. oh my God, oh my God. I haven't even eaten it yet. Y'all look at that burnt char, just 80 pounds down, 20 more to go. I'm celebrating. Y'all, it is so good. I'm not gonna lie to you all. I love my substitutes. They have helped me get healthier. But what do I always say? It's not what you eat from time to time. It's what you eat all of the time. And this right here, I don't even know. But it is real vanilla paste, real cream, Real sugar, y'all, that's the glass. It is so good. It is so good. <clears throat> okay, sorry, get it together, Maggie. Highly, highly recommend this little torch 
when we had our Maggie meet up at the Cook's Warehouse, this little torch got a little child safety and that's what we used to torch the top. I would highly recommend getting one. It might've been like $11. Lead attorney is here. He would tell me link should be in the description. So I will add this to the list of Maggie Maggie's faves. So you all can have a little torch. It's not something that you're going to use on a lot of things. But when you want to impress this right here, <laughs> Athens grows. You can make it. I've made it before. The um, substitute version with the coconut cream and the sugar substitute. But man, oh man, this right here, it's so rich and so full filling like the mouthfeel and just y'all, you just can't go wrong. Look at, Look at that. Mm. Vegan cream brulee. I doubt it. It uses real eggs. Y'all. Okay. So lead attorney, I don't know if you made a decision. I tasted all of them for you. You have your full flavor creme brulee. You have your brownie brittle with chocolate chips and sea salt. And you have your lemon mug cake. So why don't you guys vote? We'll do it like lead attorney because I got to go pick up the boys. So I want to see what lead attorney would prefer. I want to see what Suzette Speaks would prefer. Oh, Suzette got the coconut whipped cream. How have you used it and how do you like it? This came from Aldi's. You can get it at a lot of different grocery stores. Whipped cream if you're trying to avoid, excuse me, dairy. Oh, that's right. Suzette Speaks is our counselor. I am the teacher. You all are my scholars. Lead attorney is our professor. Suzette Speaks is our school counselor. The live chat is the study hall. Y'all, I'm just so happy. <sighs> Lead attorney says he's all about that creme brulee. Okay. And Suzette Speaks says so straight in my mouth. She likes the coconut cream. So which of these... <laughs> Jasmine. Okay, so I want to see everybody's vote and then I'm going to have to sign off. So put brownie brittle or just brittle, put creme brulee or just cream, and put lemon cake or just lemon if you're in the chat. And like I always say, I'll hold it up so y'all can see. Like I always say, y'all, my substitutions are just that. All of these recipes can be made with the full flavor ingredients. I just show you guys how to substitute, but you can make this. Jasmine says lemon cake. Globe Girl says lemon cake. Miles says creme brulee. All About Mika says creme brulee. <laughs> Big Bad Bull wants the um, creme brulee. Okay, I'm noticing a theme here. Almond Brown says the brownie brittle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, one of these days I'm going to cook for you all. I promise. Oh, thank you. All right, you guys. I cannot thank you all enough. This is really my happy place. And you all, you all made it very enjoyable for me. So I'm on my way to pick up the boys. They're watching a movie from 6.30 to 8.30 on the church youth group. And I told them to stay away from each other. But like siblings do, they're fighting each other and texting me about it. So while I'm streaming, I'm seeing their complaints. So... I have to go into mom mode now. Oh, Suzette Speaks says creme brulee. Thank you all so much. Um, we are on our way. We are almost monetized. In case anybody wanted to know, I've checked all of the boxes. We're almost eligible. Last time I checked, we were at 3,946 hours. So y'all, we're going to get there. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, thank you, lead attorney, for being an excellent professor. It is because of his course that I'm streaming for you all. Um, thank you everyone for just supporting me and uh, giving me a, um, a distraction because y'all know. <laughs> good night, good night, good night. I do cook for you every day. 
Tomorrow Marcus has swim, so it may be a late night stream tomorrow, but we'll come up with something. And I eat every day, so I stream for you guys every day. All right, I'm so glad. Oh, bye guys, good night. Thank you so much. Bye scholars.